thought you'd do, Sandy? Well, I sing, of course. There's your dancing. Care for a demonstration? You've been a very style forward filmmaker from the beginning of your career, but I'm curious just how those kind of techniques are developed simultaneously or side by side with the different story ideas that you have. Well, I think a big part of it, some of the sort of the high wire stuff in the film, like some of the chore choreography sequences and, you know, like the mirror effects, uh, they sort of went hand in hand with the story. And, and in a weird way, if they're very sort of complicated, ambitious shots, it's like the more that you can do in unbroken takes or the more that you can do in camera, it's about kind of suspending disbelief because you're sort of, and you're literally showing a character who is going back to the 60s in dreams. And I think in a way it was me trying to recapture when I have dreams where I sort of like, I, I, I believe that I'm somebody else in the dream. It's an incredibly sort of powerful experience and, and it was finding ways to make that more immersive. So in terms of like coming up with the first kind of like scene where Thomasin looks in the mirror and she's uh, Anya Taylor-Joy, the point of it becomes how can we capture this in camera and essentially in one shot? It's going to be more powerful and you don't break the spell with coverage. So that was something that kind of like that really um, sort of dictated a lot of the scenes. Like her walking out into the 60s for the first time is in an unbroken take. Again, it's like, it's about not breaking the spell. I really loved the um, filming the Pe Cafe de Perry sequence, um, particularly the dancing with Anya and Matt. That was a lot of fun. There was a lot of, we spent a lot of time rehearsing that. So when we finally actually got to be in the Cafe, the Cafe de Perry and actually doing it with the costumes and with um, all the dancers around us. That was very exciting. I think everyone was kind of full of adrenaline and it was so complicated as well because we were doing a lot of it, most of it live. So we were actually swi switching in and out with each other in real life. Um, only one point of it was edited. So um, that was really cool. And the mirror tricks and like the, I loved doing the, um, the mimicking each other with the hands and the hair and all of that it was lots of fun. Downtown, no fun a place for sure. Downtown. I know that this is a film that you have kind of been ideating and developing for a number of years now. And I'm curious just what was it about now that made this the time in your career to make it and how much did it have to evolve with the amount of time that's passed? Well, I think it was something I guess part of it is I had the idea and, and wanted to do something like this. And there were lots of elements of it that were like a challenge that I, you know, and things that I hadn't done before. So that was just sort of interesting to me. And I think after I did Baby Driver, I really felt like I wanted to do another film set in London, but I wanted to do a film set in London that was very different to my previous ones. So those are sort of, you know, one of many sort of reasons to do it. And uh, I'm really, I'm really happy I did because I feel like it, in a strange way, even though it's like a very fantastical movie, it's sort of strangely personal in, in lots of ways. So. It's a difficult film to kind of shake in a way. It's that strange thing it's coming out on Friday and yet I, I don't really know what I'm going to do when it comes out. It feels <laughs> a little bit like a kid leaving home. And I mean, I also do want to ask you about genre because I mean, you've experimented in a number of genres over the course of your career, but a lot of your movies, and I'd say the majority of your movies have a horror touchstone within them. And I'm curious, just is that something you're kind of cognizant of? Is that something that you just, or is it just what you personally feel ultimately drawn back to? I think it's maybe just a, a, a genre that I love and, you know, I'm not like, I don't like snobby about it in the sense of like, I, I, I've always like loved the genre and, you know, it, in, in all decades and it's something that I, you know, like sort of, I think the, the best of those films is something to aspire to. I always think it's funny when people use the term elevated horror, you know, because I think sort of like, whenever you hear that term, you, I always think, are you saying you're better than The Exorcist? Is that it? <laughs> you're, you're saying you're above that? You're saying you're above Don't Look Now? What do you What do you think you're better than? <laughs> so I, I never use the term elevated horror. I'm, I'm not. I'm not snobby like that. Knowing kind of the onset ex experience, I mean, I have to imagine that some of these days where you're just like running around, absolutely terrified, have to be exhausting. No? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They, you know. 
you're working long hours. We did three weeks of night shoots. There was a lot of sprinting away from scary figures. It could be exhausting, but the whole team was in it together. Like everyone was on the same schedule um, and we were all kind of um, bolstering each other up and motivating each other to keep on going. And uh, I do also want to ask about just your relationship working with Enya Taylor-Joy because yeah. your stories run parallel in this story, but at the same time, mm -hmm. there is this collaboration. What was it like working with her and just, yeah, working on that choreography, really? Yeah, Enya is such a wonderful person. She's such a talent. And um, you know, I really, really admire her for her grace and um, her groundedness and who she is. She really, um, I don't know, I think... She's just like such a present person to be around when you're with her. She's not she's not focusing on anything else. She's there in the moment. And that's a very like really wonderful thing to experience because we're all, I don't know, it's easy to be kind of distracted by everything that's going on in the world at the moment. Um, yeah, I loved working with them, yeah. And I mean, can you speak to just what it was like doing that club entrance scene? Because mm -hmm. it is just so spectacular and I can only imagine the like technicalities that went into it. Yeah, I think, um, it is pretty amazing, you know, to see to like to to show up and, and and see all the amazing things that the the props and the art department and everyone had um had built had had pulled off, and it kind of makes you even more excited to, to 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 pull your weight to do your side of the deal and to to try and be as best as you possibly can be.